Amen. By the grace of Christ, let us read from the New Testament, from the Gospel according to Luke, chapter 8 and verse 4. <coughs> the Gospel according to Luke, chapter 8. And verse 4, And when a great multitude had gathered, and they had come to him from every city, he spoke by a parable. A sower went out to sow his seed, and as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and it was trampled down, and the birds of the air devoured it. Some fell on rock, and as soon as it sprang out, sprang up, it withered away because it lacked moisture, and some fell among thorns. And the thorn sprang up with it and choked it. But others fell on good ground, sprang up, and yielded a crop a hundredfold. When he had said these things, he cried, He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Then the disciples asked him, saying, What does this parable mean? And he said, To you it has been given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to the rest it is given in parables, that seeing they may not see, and hearing they may not understand. Now the parable is this, the seed is the word of God. Those by the wayside are the ones who hear, then the devil comes and takes away the word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. But the ones on the rock are those who, when they hear, receive the word with joy. And these have no root, who believe for a while, and in time of temptation fall away. Now the ones that fell among thorns are those who, when they have heard, go out and are choked with cares, riches, and pleasures of life, and bring no fruit to maturity. But the ones that fell on the good ground are those who, having heard the word with a noble and good heart, keep it and bear fruit with patience. No one, when he has lit a lamp, covers it with a vessel or puts it under a bed, but sets it on a lampstand that those who enter may see the light. For nothing is secret that will not be revealed nor anything hidden that will not be known and come to light. Therefore take heed how you hear, for whoever has, to him more will be given, and whoever does not have, even what he seems to have, will be taken from him. Then his mother and brothers came to him, and could not approach him because of the crowd. And it was told him by some who said, your mother and your brothers are standing outside desiring to see you. But he answered and said to them, My mother and my brothers are these who hear the word of God and do it. Amen. The truth is that Jesus Christ does not show partiality. He doesn't behave differently toward his mother and his brothers. Other, uh, it doesn't behave differently to any other person that approaches him. For that reason, when his mother and his brothers wanted to see him, not to hear him, they wanted to see him as their relative, they were special relatives, close relatives, well in the end they couldn't see him. Nobody can see Christ except when he desires to hear his words. And even more, not only to hear them, but to also accept them, keep them in his heart, and believe them. At one time, Herod asked from Christ to perform miracles before his eyes, but he didn't. Christ doesn't invite us so that we may see him. He invites us so that we may listen to him. 
and went at some point Martha and invited Jesus to her house. The Lord didn't go there so that they may serve him. He went there so they may hear him. Because it is written, that he who hears my word and believes in him who sent me has everlasting life, and he doesn't come into judgment, for he has passed from death into life. We do not come here to see what he will do, what God will do in our life. It's a big mistake. We don't see things, so we become disappointed, and then we leave. We come here to hear his words, and he will tell us what we must do. Not what he will do. We won't see what he will do. But we want to hear what we must do. For that reason, it is very important today to see what you have come to do in church today. What have you come here for? Have you come here so Christ can speak to you concerning what you must do? Or have you come here to see what Christ can do in your life? He won't do anything that way. He'll do nothing. Because the power of Jesus Christ, the power of God, is the gospel of Jesus Christ. And the gospel saves everyone who believes it. His words. His word. The word of God. And when some people went and said, your mother and your brothers have come and they want to see you, but they cannot come now. The Lord didn't say, we'll make it easy for them. He doesn't want those who want... He doesn't want those who just want to come and see Him and take from Him to see what He can give them. He doesn't make the way easy for them. But He wants and makes the way easy for the people who come humbly, recognizing that they know nothing, they can do nothing, they've made many mistakes, to hear, so that we may hear what Christ will tell us, so that we may do it, and then walk and reach the city of blessing and joy, that is the New Jerusalem. And the answer of the Lord who said, your mother and your brothers have come to see you. He said, my mother and my brothers are those who hear the word of God and do it. Who come to listen to the word of God so that they may do the word of God. These are the ones that are close to me. My beloved, my friends, the children of God, my brothers and sisters, my joint heirs with me, my co-workers. My men servants and maid servants. For that reason, what the Lord encourages us is be careful how you hear. Do you hear with faith? Do you listen with lack of faith? With curiosity? With interest? Or the way that God wants? with the intention to obey Him, with trust in His words, and with the intention to obey them, and subject ourselves to the Word of God. Who governs your life? Is it you, with the help of Christ? Then this is wrong. Or is it Christ who governs your life the way that He wishes, and you have trusted Him completely and this is the correct way who is the boss whom do you trust who do you think knows what is right for you what is correct for you what is the appropriate thing for you what is truly this thing that will benefit you and your family Do you decide what to do and then ask for help from God? You'll go from affliction to affliction, from failure to failure. And you'll become offended in the end with God and scandalized. 
because he doesn't do anything to help you. I repeat this. In the end, you will become offended with God because he doesn't do anything to help you because you ask from him that your will be done in your life. However, today, if we make this decision, the decision of knowledge and humility, that I want your will, Lord, and please help me fix my heart, return me from my own desires and will, from my opinions, knowledge, and decisions, return me from these things to you, and then help me deny myself, pick up my cross, so that I may follow you. Because wherever you go, that is where your servant is. And whoever serves you, God will honor him. So what do we want from Christ? We want him to serve us, or we to serve him? These are crucial questions that we have to pull out of our heart and look deep into our conscience and see what it is that we consider Christ to be in His Word. Do we want a servant to help us out in our life? Then this isn't Jesus. Or do we want a Lord so that we serve Him and follow Him? We want a Lord. Amen? We want a Lord. We want Jesus Christ to be our Lord and our God. We want Him to be our teacher. We do not want to teach Him what to do. We want He to teach us what to do. We want Him to be our guide. We don't want to lead Him concerning where to go and He to help us. But we want He to lead us and we to follow Him. For that reason... Our Lord says, you must know that whatever exists and is hidden in you, it will come to the open because you must understand this so you can be corrected. You must understand and we must realize that we want a Lord who serves. who serves us and, and gives us favors and answers us and gives to us and grants to us and puts the life in order that we want. This is what we want. And He fixes things in the way that we want. And then we become, become disappointed when He doesn't do these things. For that reason, God wants to pull these things from the hidden parts of our heart out to the open so that we may choose. Today is a day of choice. Today is a day of election. <coughs> There's nothing hidden that God won't bring out into the open. For our own good, that is. There is nothing secret that won't become known and won't come out into the open. He will bring out everything so that we may see and discern our mistakes and the fruit of our wrong and failed choices. Today is a day of choice, of election. For that reason, be careful how you hear things. Be careful how you hear the Word of God. Not the way that it suits you according to your will. I hear the word of God. He spoke to me because God wants to do what I want. No, this is wrong. You've understood wrong. I've heard many people understand things mistaken from the word of God. I've heard, I've understood things wrong in the word of God. God wants to tell other things to me. And because my heart desire, uh, desires other things... It understands things wrongly and accepts them wrongly. For that reason, God wants to change everything. He wants to bring things out into the open so we can see our failures and understand. Either through teaching and doctrine or through trial. With captivity, 
Because, my dear brethren, God wants to change things. Not to search for, search to find us, but so that we search for Him to find Him. Not the man to search to find the woman that left him so he can ask her back. This is the human thing to do. But the woman that has left to return then and ask from the husband to accept her. And the woman is the church. God won't be searching for the church so he can bring her into order. The last church. The glorious church I'm talking about now. But it must be that the church will search for her Lord to hear his words and obey them. For that reason, be careful how you hear. And he said these things to his disciples who had ears to hear. But before they became disciples, they were part of the multitude. And they hadn't understood. And what is this multitude? Not the multitude that doesn't approach Christ, but the multitude that runs toward Christ. And let me say it the way that God told me. Who of all, which of all, are disciples and they're not the multitude still? So can a born-again Christian be part of the multitude? Yes. And he was baptized in the Holy Spirit to be a multitude? Yes. Depending on how he hears. And if he is the multitude, he has to understand. For that reason, to all of us, he says, not only for those who are on the outside, but for the disciples. He says this parable, the sower went out to sow his seed. And while he was sowing, other seed fell on the wayside, and it was trampled down in the birds of the air that are air devoured it some fell on rock and as soon as it sprang out it withered away because it lacked moisture and some fell among thorns and the sprung and the thorns sprang up with it and choked it and others fell on good ground sprang up and yielded a crop a hundredfold when he had said these things he cried even the multitudes that were around him and his disciples that were next to him. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. He who has ears so that he may hear, then let him hear this. But pay attention how you hear. <coughs> pay attention of what you have in your heart and how you hear. The disciples said, what does this parable mean? They didn't understand it. What does this parable mean? And the Lord told them, to you it has been given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. To the rest, they will see, but they will not discern. They will listen, but they won't understand. And what is, what is the criteria of hearing and not understanding, of seeing and not being able to discern? Not the, so, not the seed, the seed is the same. Not the Word of God, the Word of God is the same. But the heart of man. The heart of man in general, the heart of man in certain situations, the heart of man and certain occasions. Those who sowed on the way, the wayside, are those who hear not once but repetitively, and that is the multitude in the church. <coughs> those who hear the word of God. But the seed doesn't enter their heart. I hear the word. And I want God to obey me afterward. 
the 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 heart is trampled down. I know what I want. I have issues, and what I want is to get married, for example. What I want is for God to bless me and my business. What I want is for God to heal my niece. What I want is for Him to heal my father. I come here for one reason, maybe two or three specific things. That God will act. That I see His hand mighty. This is what I want. And the Lord said, then you're the wayside. The Word of God falls. You've been listening so long. The Word of God falls, but it doesn't enter into the heart. You hear, but you don't understand. You see, but you don't discern. You're the wayside. The Word of God is useless for this heart and for this person. Useless. For this person, To whom, with, to which would come from all cities, useless, completely useless, completely useless, because the seed falls, it doesn't enter the heart, and afterward the the devil comes through his birds and takes the seed and it's lost, and the good seed goes to waste. The word of God goes to waste. The power of God goes to waste. They can't believe, they can't be saved, they can't accept, and they can't bear fruit. Those who are, on the, who are in the rocky area, when they hear the word of God, they receive the, it with joy immediately. But they have no root, and in the time of temptation they fall away. For temptations will come, God will permit this to happen so that your faith may be tested and your submission to the Word of God. It can't be the temptation won't come. Even in the paradise of Eden, where things are very good, created very well by God. One couple, children of God, Adam and Eve, God permitted temptation to them so that their faith may be tested. For that reason, the Apostle James says, Consider it all joy when you fall into various temptations. Because the test of your faith, when you're tried in the faith through temptation, this will have a perfect work. I heard, I accepted, but I did not put him in my heart. I didn't guard him. I didn't believe him. I didn't accept him. I didn't accept him to, to obey it. I accepted it because I liked it. For that reason, it has no roots. Because he has other things that are very serious in his life. Very powerful. Rocks. And when temptation comes, so that the choice of man may be tested of what I shall choose. Will I choose Christ? Or my fiancé? Will I choose Christ? Or my father and my mother? Will I choose Christ? Or my job? Will I choose Christ? Or the temptation will come. What is the temptation? Look here, with Christ you will lose. Your job, they say. You'll lose your father. You'll lose your mother. You'll lose your inheritance. You'll lose everything. But what does the Lord say? Seek the kingdom of God first and His righteousness, and you will win everything else. Now, whom do you believe? In temptation, whom do you listen to? Whom do you trust? Temptation comes from the devil who strives to destroy our faith. <coughs> and God permits this so that our faith may be tested and so that it may be revealed what we keep within our hearts. Do we have rocks? Nobody can see them. 
No one can see. You no know, one can see a rock in a piece of land. It's deep in the soil. <coughs> the other loves that we have in our heart toward things can't. Nobody can see them. But how will it be revealed if of uh, what I love when temptation comes? On one side it will be Jesus, the kingdom of God, and as well on the other side will be my heart, uh, my, my job, my beloved one, my the person that I love, whatever it is, thing that I love. And then it's a matter of choice. Today is a day of choice. We have to choose. We have to make the decision. Now the ones that fell among the thorns are those who, when they heard the word of God, but under cares and riches and pleasures of this life, they go out and are choked and do not bear any fruit. Now it is where you go, how you listen, and where you go. Where do you go? Do you go to deal with cares? Do you go out for riches? Do you go out to pleasures of this life? Where do you go? If you go toward riches, toward cares, and toward pleasures of this life, then you won't bear fruit. You'll dry up. You'll fade away. You'll drown. We know that riches and cares and the pleasures of this life, the pleasures of this life is the desires of the flesh, riches is the arrogance of this life, and cares are the desires of other things. It is the mind frame of the world. And whoever has the mind of the world, the, heart, the love of the Father isn't in him. And if man doesn't have the fatherly love to take care of him and, and protect him and, and nourish him, and he doesn't have the grace of Christ, he doesn't have also the power of the Holy Spirit. So what are you mindful of? What is your great ambition? What is this thing that pulls you, that lures you, that leads you? Where are you going? Are you going toward the desires of your flesh? the pleasures of this life, then you won't prosper. Are you running toward the cares of this world, the desire of other things? Then you won't bear fruit. Or are you going to the increase of your wealth? You won't come to maturity. Even if you hear the word of God, even if you come to church, even if you pray, even if you ask to see what God will do, You've made a great mistake. God won't do anything for you. Because God doesn't want to do things. He doesn't want to bless you in your cares of this world, in your riches, and obviously in the pleasures of this life. There, whatever it's hidden, He will bring it out into the open so you can understand, so that we can understand. So, my dear brothers and sisters, within evil times, in the latter days, the Word of God that is without lie and divinely inspired reveals to us immediately, not through a dream as he did to Jeremiah, but with a divinely inspired Word of God that is without lie, the Word of Christ, the Gospel of Jesus. He reveals to us clearly, crystal clearly, and absolutely who we are today, where we're going, and where we will end up. And because He is so good, this God of ours, He reveals it to us at a personal level to every one of us since we know what we keep in our heart and the only one of us who knows what we know in our heart completely other than us is the Lord. So today, He reveals to us and shows us. And the Word of God is yes and amen. It's without lie. 
Things can't come otherwise. This is the voice of the devil. This is how things will come. The way that the Word of God says. The way that the book, uh, the, our construction manual says. It can't be that the book that the creation, the, the, the creator of the car that I have to be wrong. This is what I must do to sustain it. This is what I must be careful. And this is how I must drive it. And you have to service the car every so often. Take care of it and inspect it. And we have a service every Sunday. Every Sunday we must have a service. At least. When we stand in the presence of God, we open our heart to Him. And we bring out our heart. And we ask from God to not, that He not be the one to pull it out from us. Today we want to return to Him so that He may fix our heart and make it return, but through teaching and not through captivity and not through afflictions. The good heart, now to the good land, good earth, they are the ones who have heard the word They hold a good heart, a faithful heart, sincere heart, that is straightforward according to the heart of God. And they bear fruit with patience. Not just like that. But now, God loves us. He is our Lord. And He wants to return us so that we may return. What does the farmer do to the trampled earth? I've told you that my father and I were, were uh, farmers in the old time. There were parts that we would step on, a path, so we can reach the end of the field. Paths in the field. <laughs> and the more the time went by, and the harvest would end, the, the stuff, my father would say, so much more would the paths become, and broader, but when the field was filled, the path was narrow. But until the harvest was over, the paths had become broader and they become more. That is, the wayside would become more. The trampled earth would become more. So what did my father do? Being a wise farmer, because the nature had taught him, he took the till, the, he'd, um, he'd plow the earth deeply, this trampled earth, he'd plow it deeply so that next year when he would sow, the, the seed would, would grow. So if my father did this, who is a farmer, what would God do to the wayside? He'd ask for return through teaching, but if you don't return with teaching, he'd have to plow the earth. It's painful. You know what plowing means? Upside down. Things get turned upside down. Captivity in the land of the Chaldeans. Prayer, return us, Lord, from this land of the Chaldeans so that we may return. This is the plowing of the Lord. The land that there were stones, well, it was more difficult there, more painful for my father and for me, but necessary nonetheless. He would search diligently to find these rocks. He would pull them out into the light and throw them away. Because the rocks made the land bad. They didn't make it good. They didn't bear fruit. So with plowing again, he would found the find the rocks, and with greater attempt, he'd uproot them, pull out the rocks, he'd say, call it, so that the earth may be good and kind. And when the earth had thorns and, and, and briars, it were more difficult and more painful for the earth. He had to plow the earth and clean out the weeds and to even take out the thorns, the, the seeds from the thorns. Otherwise, the earth, the soil, the land would become bad, useless and fruitless. But because it was his land, it was his uh, heritage, his possession, he'd always take care of the field so that it'd be perfect. 
So we know that God wants to make our heart perfect. Perfect. And He will make it perfect. And He can do it. But there is the way of us opening our hearts so that He may fix it. By calling out to Him, Return us, Lord, by faith, not by, by sight. But by faith return us and we shall return. Because otherwise, we will find ourselves cap captives in the faraway land. And then we will call out by sight and say, Return us to the church, Lord, and we shall return. So let us choose today what our future will be. Today, every one of us can choose his future, his near future, and his distant future. He can repent today and see his distant future. Today we can ask from God to return us so that we may return. And the, f the more distant future that we continuously ask so that God may return us and that we may always be close to him in the presence of God, the blessing of God, in the cities of blessing and joy, our own cities of blessing.